to see the mayor and his team uh, in the Lake Charles area and the chamber and the tourism commission working together to do the best things for not only people who live here, for visitors, uh, I see a bright, bright future for tourism in this region. Thanks for joining us on Louisiana's Playground Podcast, your roadmap to all things Lake Charles, Louisiana. I'm Brady Raynard. And I'm Anna Strider. We are excited to bring you the authentic stories of Southwest Louisiana. And today, we're really talking about Louisiana as a whole and how you can continue to build your own personal itinerary. In this episode, number 24, we welcome on the Lieutenant Governor of Louisiana, Mr. Billy Nungesser. A fun conversation there as we talk, obviously, as I just said, all about Louisiana and even a little Australia and New Zealand. Hmm. They do call us a world-class destination, Brady. Well, we're going to put that to the test, hopefully, here in the next coming years. We'll have to see. In addition, of course, to our wonderful guest, Mr. Nungesser, we also, as we always do, had to dig into another Lake Charles restaurant. It's time for On the Eats. On the Eats is where Brady and I go out into the community and we choose a local restaurant to go and really dive into the menu and then bring that back to you all on the podcast and tell you what we ate and what we thought. And this particular episode, we had to go with a staple. And even if you have not been there, but you have driven down I-10, eastbound or westbound, you know about Pats of Henderson. From their billboards to eventually when you find your way inside the restaurant, it's a, it's a place that I'm sure leaves its mark on visitors far and wide through southwest Louisiana. Because look, they've been there for a while, more than five decades, third generation family run business. And they've really created a staple right here in Southwest Louisiana with their Cajun dishes and their customer service. They've recently gone through a beautiful renovation to the property. When you walk in, there's this elegant bar space. So whether you're hanging out for a drink or even just going to grab lunch or dinner in the bar area, it's a 10 out of 10. And then they also have on each side of the bar, their separate dining spaces that are your traditional white tablecloth. but They've just got this comfortable, cozy atmosphere that complements it perfectly. And the food is incredible. When you have the same chef for more than 40 years, you're going to have that. They've been able to do their own ruse and their own seasonings just to kind of take a piece of them home with you. Because when you're there, you understand just they know their way around the kitchen, obviously, which is how they've become so successful in what they do. Uh, it's kind of an elegant, comfortable atmosphere selling what we do best here, Louisiana cuisine for lunch and dinner. I have to say, what really surprised me, and it shouldn't have, but it did, was how perfectly seasoned everything was. The recipes that you can tell are generations old. The pre really have done it right in getting the flavor into every bite. They're known for their Louisiana Cajun dishes. They have their crab claw fingers which i've had on another occasion and they are just incredible they have a full lunch and dinner menu and the gumbo there i'm taking your line here brady it was incredible you know why because it's always gumbo season it is always gumbo even in the heat of august yeah but i love that you mentioned their seasons there's a disclaimer on the menu that hey None of this food is going to be under season. Just so you know, there is no way to dial this back. Like this is Cajun flavor. And I really appreciate them kind of taking a hard stance on that because look, it's not going to be too hot for you. Just try it. Just go with it. You're going to love it. As you said, the gumbo is one of the huge examples of that. So awesome. Of course, believe it or not, that's what I got, right? The shrimp and okra gumbo when I was there. So delicious. I love a good seafood gumbo. And then when you throw in some okra as well, you can't go wrong. Just a classic roux, beautiful color, beautiful taste. The rice was perfect and fluffy. Like it is an ideal bowl of gumbo, exactly what you're looking for. And one of the places, if you want gumbo in town, I would suggest you make a stop by. We've got a few of them. If you listen to our podcast for the previous 23 episodes, this is one that you should also be on your list for some of the best Lake Charles gumbo. 
we've talked about it before. There's not many places where you can get a good okra gumbo. That's typically what people talk about their mama makes, their grandma makes. Like that is a family recipe and tradition that they brought straight to the table. That's a great point that you bring up because uh, okra gumbo is tough to find in a restaurant. In addition to there, I went with the fried seafood platter, which of course had oysters and shrimp and catfish and fries. Everything that you would expect from a fried seafood meal and gumbo, it hit every mark that you're looking for. I, on the other hand, got the Pat's hamburger steak with asparagus as my side. And let me tell y'all, I was going to go with another side. There's so many different options. They've even got this like sweet potato souffle dish, which I've had on another occasion. And it's almost like having a dessert as a side. So I was almost going to go with that. But I heard from our fantastic server that the asparagus was delicious. And I love asparagus. So I got that. And I have to say the best asparagus in Lake Charles that I've tasted. That's a disclaimer there. Best asparagus I've tasted. Our team member who was with us, she got the crawfish etouffee. I also took a bite of that. Clearly, I was sharing off everyone's plate here. (laughs) And that, again, was absolutely incredible. One of my favorite dishes. And the wifey loves the the Cajun pasta as well. She raves about it. I didn't get it this time. But if you go, that's another option there. So... Follow those billboards right down the interstate. Get off the 210 exit and stop in and let us know what you think. From a great meal to a great guest, we welcome on Billy Nungesser, the lieutenant governor of Louisiana. He's held that role since 2015, and under his administration, the state of Louisiana has celebrated record-breaking visitation year after year. There's a reason the New York Times deemed him the hardest-working man in Louisiana. And out of office, he's an active sportsman who values our state's natural resources, which means, Anna, he fits right in here on Louisiana's playground. Welcome to the show, Lieutenant Governor. Glad to be with y'all. We're excited to have you on. Each episode, we talk about so many of the great things that there are to do in Southwest Louisiana, from the big city amenities to, of course, our small town charm. And we're bringing that to the table here today and talking about just the fact that that's the state of Louisiana. That's what we're made of. And that fits right in, as Brady said, with Louisiana's playground. But before we get to the conversation... We're going to ask you a few questions to get to know you a little bit better. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right. We're going to find out how you play in Louisiana's playground. First of all, crawfish or gumbo? Crawfish. Crawfish. Why crawfish? Because there's so many different ways to eat them. You can even eat them in your gumbo. Oh, that's a good answer. Okay. So I'm already slightly disappointed. I'm a gumbo man, but let me ask you a follow up. Is there a gumbo season? Year round. And, and there's so many different gumbos yep. all over the state, and they're all delicious and cooked so many different ways. So, And you never know what you're going to find in that pot of gumbo. That's uh, right. Something new gets added every time somebody <laughs> makes it. Yeah. Our, our phrase on, on here is there's no, there's no such thing as gumbo season. It's always gumbo season. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> yeah. what it is. It's always gumbo. I forgot our <laughs> phrase. It's always gumbo season. So we brought recipes to Australia, and we got a couple local chefs to use their seafood. But to put our recipes... Uh, it's crawfish Monica gumbo, and we brought all the Tabasco, all the special sauces with us, and they did a pretty good job. The gumbo wasn't as thick, uh, but they had their shrimp, their seafood in the gumbo, but it was great to see them try to make Louisiana dishes with their local seafood. So uh, it was a great way to, to try out some new gumbo in New Zealand. That's awesome. I'm sure inspiring for them as well. It was, and I tell you, it brought a little, a little Louisiana flavor there. And got them a little hungry to come to Louisiana. Fantastic. That's the best part. doesn't matter what you add to the gumbo, really. It's going to turn out great as long as you're eating it with wonderful people. That's right. That's right. All right. The next question. Poolside or beachside? Poolside. Is that, are you a little biased today? Yeah. I, well, I'll tell you <laughs> what. I cannot stay out in that sand for too long. Love going in the ocean, make a few dips, come back. But I'm not a person to lay out on the beach all day. At the pool... It's a little easier to move around and, and, and duck in out the sun, but uh, so I'd say poolside. Agreed. On the beach side. But that works. I, I can respect that 100%. Okay, final question. Concert or comedy show? Concert. Concert. The energy at the concerts, just uh, the music. And I'll tell you, uh, we've got so many great ambassadors in Louisiana, most recently the Lauren Daigle concert. Uh, to go to that concert, and see all those young people stand up and pray with her before it. And then her music is so inspiring and so 
uh, comes from our heart. When you can go to a concert like that and it just makes you feel special and really gets you inspired about the, our future. Absolutely. And look, we've got a lot to talk to here on the show. Uh, now that we have known you a little bit better and some of the ways that you like to play here in Louisiana's playground, let's kind of start overall the big picture. Visitation, uh, I I'd mentioned in the intro, has really increased, you know, going into pre-COVID and has rebounded nicely post-COVID. Where did we sit this past year, 2022, with visitation in the state? Well, you know, in, in 2019, we had over 53 million people visit Little Old Louisiana. They left behind $1.9 billion in taxes. Uh, that's over $1,100 per Louisiana family you and I didn't have to pay. The fourth biggest industry. Through COVID, it slipped to number five. 2022, we saw over 42 million visitors. Uh, so we're back almost to those record-breaking years. But realizing we wasn't back fully open. The, the, the country was open, but the airlines were not fully back. We had trouble getting people here. Uh, a lot of the restaurants and hotels were not fully staffed, having trouble getting employees. So now that we're back with our doors wide open, I suspect this year or for sure next year, we'll be back to second, setting another record breaking year. I love uh, the way that you break it down on the website. So uh, the $17.1 billion generated equates to 106 pounds of crawfish for each visitor. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Exactly. It's really something digestible, actually. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Can understand that piece Fun of data. intended, yeah. Yes, every bit of it intended there. You know, you mentioned that 2023, we're really looking at coming back and being another record-breaking year there. There's so many new additions coming online across the state, and especially here in Southwest Louisiana, as we've had a lot of growth. What does that trajectory look like here in impacting the state's tourism? You know, it's incredible with the LNG facilities for business and now the mayor and the team here uh, in the Lake Charles area, uh, just this morning at breakfast, hearing all the great projects, the, the uh, beach development there with the Children's Museum and all the things for kids to do. Uh, just the list goes on and on and on. And the influx of money to help rebuild after the hurricanes, uh, to see the mayor and his team and the Chamber and the Tourism Commission working together to do the best things for not only the people who live here, for visitors. Uh, I see a bright, bright future for tourism in this region uh, with the casino action, along with all these great things for kids, the parks. We have a great state park, Sam Houston here, the bike trails, the canoeing. Uh, we know after COVID, people bought RVs uh, and uh, uh uh, fishing equipment, canoes, and record numbers because they had to get outdoors and do things. We know for the foreseeable future, they're going to use these things to see the great outdoors of America. And surely the great outdoors in this part of Louisiana is something to see. And uh, we're excited about that. It's truly Louisiana's outback over here, especially when you're down in Cameron Parish and some of the surrounding regions there. It's just a gorgeous area that's very uniquely Louisiana. We're excited about the opportunity to have people stay here and not only explore Lake Charles, but all the surrounding areas. You've got the Gothic Jail in Derrida. Uh, that's a short drive. Uh, there's ghosts there. Everyone loves a good ghost story, I got to say. But, but we've got so many unique towns and cities in this whole region that gives you a great opportunity to spend a whole week here and see so much. So uh, it's seeing all these new projects coming online. It's going to be an incredible opportunity to grow this industry here, get it back to the number four industry and possibly even number three with the growth potential here. You talk about all the new projects and the one that I think maybe excites me the most as someone that enjoys consuming Louisiana food is Louisiana Food and Wine Festival that's just around the corner uh, about to happen. How exciting is it to get a festival of that magnitude that is obviously going to be celebrated here, but celebrates the state, our culture, our food, everything that it means to be Louisiana will be celebrated over that four days? Absolutely. What it does, it not only highlights the great food, but those chefs and the personalities and the passion and love they put into every dish. And that's what really makes it special. You know, we don't just cook food. We live it. Uh, it's, it's entertaining. It's, it's not just a meal. And so we put so much pizzazz in every meal we cook. Uh, it's entertainment. It's tourism. 
So to have that event here and highlight all the great chefs, restaurants, uh, breweries, uh, all the great things we have in, in that magnitude is going to be incredible. And it will last and bring people back to this region for many years to come. And I love the really culinary focus that Lake Charles has shown over the last little bit. The Louisiana Seafood Cook-Off, the Food and Wine Festival, as well as the, you know, winning the Seafood Cook-Off, you know, one of our own in Amanda Cusey, uh, really shining a light on how much uh, good food we have to eat here. And when we get that opportunity to take our king or queen of seafood and compete against 14 other states at the restaurant show at the convention center in New Orleans every year, it brings national, international attention to this region. And she surely has done that. It's a boost for the local economy, but it also helps those local restaurants and entrepreneurs really uh, raise the bar for their restaurant. I want to talk about the fact that there's... So many reasons that people travel across the country, across the world. We go for many different things, but shopping, culinary and dining, like we've been talking about, and family and friends and visiting those relatives is at the top of those lists, especially here in the state of Louisiana. And so many of these products that are coming online directly correlate with that, like we've been talking about. I know that you um, mentioned Sam Houston Jones State Park and some of the public-private partnerships that have come on board with that park reopening just last year. I know Bayou Adventure has self-launched kayaks right there on the facility. You don't have to plan that advance. You can be truly in a relaxing state at the state parks, the most beautiful cabins. I've stayed at a number of our state parks. Gorgeous cabins there. Yeah, and I tell you, since we started this private-public partnership, looking for new things to put in those state parks is really exciting. One of them, we opened up horseback riding, uh, a mountain bike trail at Boga Cheddar, the number two mountain bike trail in the country. We're looking to do those at all of our parks. Uh, we also just recently purchased wheelchairs on tracks, um, and we're buying more of them so kids or adults with disabilities can get in that chair and get off the beaten path into the woods and see the wildlife. Uh, it's a game changer for people confined to a wheelchair. We're also building... Uh, wheelchair accessible playgrounds and water slides, things that will really up the game for these people that are in a wheelchair. You know, we're even looking through the private-public partnership when we add additional cabins, making sure uh, a portion of those cabins are built for special needs with all the bells and whistles. So uh, we really want to make them a place where they can go, people with special needs, and really feel welcome. Uh, that's a goal of mine over the next couple of years to make all our parks really welcome and Matt for those special needs community. That's incredible. And I know that's something that directly aligns with the city of Lake Charles and some of their goals as they're revamping, continuing to build and develop the playgrounds here in our community to have that same mission in mind. Yeah. And in addition to everything that we offer on the outdoor side, we also do bring in those big acts as well. You had mentioned Lauren Daigle, who had been, who's been a wonderful Louisiana ambassador, and now kind of the next the, the next one to kind of follow in her footsteps, after, especially after what she did this past year, and Lainey Wilson. She'll be performing here at the Golden Nugget later this year, and she, you know, country music superstar now. She really is. I tell you, we've been very lucky. Coming out of COVID, what do we do best than anyone? We throw a parade. So we're in a country that have parades besides Louisiana, the Macy's Parade, Rose Parade, Lainey Wilson last year stole the show. She rode on that float, gave a great performance. And what happens leading up to the parade? She gets you know, female vocals a year, award after award she's winning. So she is truly a superstar here from Louisiana. I tell people there's something in the soil here that grows so much talent. Because per capita, we have more Grammy nominees than any other state uh, year after year. The talent coming out of this state is just incredible. That is the best fun fact that I have heard in a long time. Grammy winners and NFL superstars, apparently, we just we, we, we're, we breed them differently here. We're, we're doing pretty good on the college scene, too, with the women's and now the bas baseball championship and uh, puts a little pressure on the Tigers uh, next year for the – for LSU to, to step it up a notch, huh? Yeah, for sure. And I love Scott Van Pelt, ESPN uh, sports anchor, has one of the best lines ever. Uh, it was after the LSU National Football Championship in 2020, early 2020 in January. He said, you know, you, you just don't get it unless you're here. People aren't from Louisiana. They're of Louisiana. 
And I just thought that was such a, a pool powerful line because it is, it feels different because it, we are different. Absolutely. You know, I, I, I tell people I was so proud of, of the LSU team, but I was just as proud as the fans. Uh, they go there, they, they take over the city, uh, you know, the bars and restaurants in Omaha, well, Louisiana. And, mm-hmm. and, and there were other, there were other teams there, but Louisiana has always stole the show and it's those people's love and passion for where they live. They bring it with them. I couldn't agree more, especially being an out of state resident who has made Louisiana my home. The only thing I disagree with though, I don't know if it's in the soil. I think it might be in the food. Could be. It's in the crawfish <laughs> juice. <maybe>. Exactly. <laughs> Growing up with that. We're talking about just how the state of Louisiana influences other states and how we travel together around the country, but we're also an international destination. As far as the South goes, New Orleans and coming to Louisiana, we are internationally known and on people's bucket list of places they've got to come try the food. Absolutely. You know, when I first got elected, I was at a a conference in Arizona and trying to learn what my job was. And, And I learned there we didn't have a civil rights trail. So we came home and went to work on that. But also, I believe it was South Dakota got up and said, my number one international market's Australia. They come and stay for weeks and spend a lot of money. And I said, when she got off the stage, I asked her, what do you have in South Dakota? She said, not much, but I go there. And people that travel that far, they use a travel consultant or travel agent. So I came back and said, we're going to Australia. Well, COVID canceled the first trip. But that trip to New Zealand and Australia with direct flights into Houston, it's perfect. They love to rent a car and drive and see two or three states. Well, we're going to get them to head this way, stop in Lake Charles, Lafayette, New Orleans, before they go on to Florida. A great opportunity for New Zealand Australians to come to this region and enjoy the great food, culture, and the people. And uh, so we looking forward to that international market really expanding because we know they stay longer, they spend more money, and it's just a great opportunity to grow that market. And there are people that love fun, too. You know, everyone likes traveling, but, you know, uh, just at, at least uh, from what they produce arts and culture wise, uh, New Zealand and Australia, they're fun loving people. So I think they'll fit right in. I, I tell you, I couldn't agree more. I, I made friends for life when I was over there. And, you know, as I travel the world and I tell people, ask them, why do you send people to Louisiana? Food, the music, the culture. But the number one reason, it's you. It's the people. We treat strangers like family. They leave with a friend for life and they keep coming back for more. And nowhere else in the world, these travel agents tell me, do they send people? Do they get such a warm and fuzzy feeling from the people? They embrace them. I had Canadian consultants tell me, you invite Canadians to your backyard to eat crawfish. You don't even know them. And, <laughs> and you meet them on the street and invite them over to your house. That makes you incredibly proud of our state and the way we're friendly, warm, loving people. And I tell people all over, these tourism numbers, they're Louisiana's numbers. That's because of Louisianans and the love and passion that Louisianans have for life and sharing that with visitors. So uh, that's why we keep setting re- breaking records is because of our people. And we, we did touch on Houston a little bit and that direct flight, but New Orleans and the MSY airport there has also added a number of direct flights into Frankfurt recently, London, Montreal. So opening up so many different both northern and eastern connections for us there to come over and have that European influence, that French culture. So it's a direct fit into Absolutely. all that we have to offer. And we're going uh, back to Germany, France, and we just received the $300,000 grant for the next three years to go to three new international markets, Spain, Italy, and India. So where we have to pick and choose three or four trips a year, we're now going to be able to add three new foreign countries to our our list to welcome to Louisiana. So uh, the more international visitors, they spend more money, but they also don't just see one city. So our job is to make sure if they land in New Orleans or in Houston, they see all of Louisiana. And when I first got elected and and people would tell me, well, I'm not going to bring my kids to Mardi Gras in New Orleans. It's too wild. I said, well, do you realize we have Mardi Gras all over Louisiana? They didn't know. So we started that year promoting family-friendly, safe, affordable Mardi Gras all over Louisiana. And we're real proud to say, partnering with the local tourism folks, we've seen double-digit increases in out-of-town visitors 
come into Mardi Gras here in Lake Charles, in Lafayette. So Mardi Gras outside of New Orleans has grown tremendously, and we're going to continue to do that. We had international visitors from Japan go to Mardi Gras in Lake Charles, uh, in, in Shreveport. We had people uh, from Germany in Homer Morgan City Mardi Gras. They look online, they see the cost of the hotel, they find the night niche that they would like to enjoy. Every parade throws something differently. You can chase a chicken in my moo, catch hot dogs in Shreveport, but it's incredible uh, how diverse the Mardi Gras uh, crews are all over the state. And so it's, it's really exciting that we have that tool in our toolbox to promote all over Louisiana. And I like how you're kind of touching on each of the cities, and it's something that obviously you guys have wanted to maybe even change the way you market the state as well. Change our new rebrand on the website, explorelouisiana.com now is what, what gets you guys there. And after going through a, uh, a similar rebrand, except ours was a complete rebrand, not just the website and then the idea, we kind of see it firsthand that that's your front door, that's your welcome mat. And if you want people to explore and see other parts of the state, what better way than to let them know right from the title? Right. And I tell you, I got to give my uh, kudos to Kyle and his team. Uh, instead of just sitting here, uh, they're looking at new incredible, incredible ways by rebranding this region and got people excited about it. Great job they did. And, and we did the same thing. We looked for those words that excite people. And, and, and Travel Louisiana has been there for a while. But we put a, feelers out there. We looked at the data, explore, visit. Those words are getting people action items. So uh, we changed the name, Explore. Uh, we're excited about that, getting more people excited about coming to Louisiana. I think that's right on par. And I know that destinations across the country are doing it. And it's really wonderful to see Louisiana being part of that and really leading the charge in all aspects from the state all the way down to those local organizations like Visit Lake Charles and really putting into action what people know and then giving them a tool to continue to expand their knowledge. There's so much going on. You have so many initiatives. What does the Louisiana Office of Tourism have that's exciting on the horizon that people want to know? Well, you know, we, we come out of uh, uh, Mardi Gras and we roll right around in the fair and festival season. Over 400 fairs and festivals in Louisiana. If it flies, swims, if you can eat it, shoot it, drink it, heck, we name a festival after it. <laughs> and every year I say, I'm going to go to all of them before I die. And every year we keep adding new ones. <laughs> uh, last year, the King Cake Fest. And two years ago, the Fried Chicken Fest. So that is an incredible tool in our toolbox no other state has to highlight all those great festivals. And look, those people that put them on, they work year round, put it on great festivals, and, and they, they're all volunteers. Uh, that's just an incredible amount of people working behind the scenes to put these events on for us to share with the world. So we're rolling into that season on any given weekend, anywhere in Louisiana, there's so much going on. Uh, that's an incredible tool in our toolbox. So we're excited through summer to see these fair and festivals uh, kick in all over the state. Just from our conversations and your background, your passion for Louisiana is evident. Um, in terms of how you you describe it and you talk about it, what is it to you personally that really makes Louisiana so special to where you've you've switched professions so you can further promote it? Well, it's easy when you've got people in the tourism industry, uh, in the hospitality industry, that is so passionate about, I guess, pleasing people, uh, making our visitors feel welcome. It's from the people working in the hotels to the people working in the restaurants to the back of the room people. Uh, everyone has a love and passion for people. And if you have that and you enjoy showing people a good time, it's the best job in the world promoting this great state. I tell other lieutenant governors uh, that are jealous of what we have here. It's contagious. Uh, you know, it's, it, we, we're friendly. We love people, we love life, and we love showing people a good time. And what better thing could you have than people that love doing that to promote your great state? That's why we're all here, because we love what we're doing and promoting the community we're a part of. So 
it's been wonderful to have the conversation here with you today. Just talking about all that Southwest Louisiana and just the state as a whole has going on. And the future is so incredibly bright for us, continuing to move forward, developments online. So you can head on over to explorelouisiana.com to learn about different itineraries, things going on in the state, as well as at visitlakecharles.org. There's so much happening here. So thank you for being here with us. Great to be with you. Thank you. Thanks again for Lieutenant Governor Nungesser for joining us here on the show. And thank you for taking time out of your day to join us here on the podcast. If you enjoyed the show, will you please leave us a rating or a review or maybe even press that follow button. It's the plus sign that you see on your screen if you're looking at your phone, which I know you are. If you're looking at it, press that follow button and follow us along on this podcast journey. Each time that you do, it helps us grow our audience so that we can continue to share the unique experiences that Louisiana's Playground has to offer. You can head over to either visitlakecharles.org or Explore Louisiana to find more information about where to eat, events happening this weekend, and everything going on in Louisiana. I'm Anna Strider. And I'm Brady Raynard. Thanks again for coming play at Louisiana's Playground. Sit you.